All righty. So today we're going to talk about something I love, which is bicycling. So most people don't bike for obvious reasons. They're slow. You get sweaty. When it's wintry, you get cold. There are a lot of exercise, which can be exhausting. I think that's about it. Sometimes you get them stolen. So we're going to talk about how to daily commute bike every single day, all year long, if you want to. Um, and if you don't want to all year long, how to do it more. Um, so I started riding my bike in Boston in the 90s. And this is how much America has changed in just maybe 20 years. I bought my bike at one of the few bike shops that I knew about. And it was um, a cruiser, which was a new thing. It was an old thing, obviously, but it was new that they were available again. And I rode it down to Copley or some square, and I'm hanging out with my beautiful new bike, and a reporter comes up for the Boston Globe and says, hey, can I take a photo of you with your bike? It's such a weird thing to see. Basically, I know it sounds unbelievable, but this was like 1993 or four, and nobody rode their bikes in Boston. Boston is infamous for its traffic. Now, everywhere you go, everywhere in the US, even if there's not nearly enough bike paths, there's a whole bike culture. And um, there's a lot of people who are more comfortable with the idea of biking around, at least on the weekend, or to a cafe with their friend. So the virtues of bicycling are obvious. It's quiet. Uh, the image I showed you in the beginning uh, is on a blog. I wrote top 10 urban commuter everyday bicycles for work, hot dates, and family. And that's on elephantjournal.com. We'll put the link in the video um, below in the caption. And it's on Elephant. You can just Google it. Uh, top 10 urban commuter everyday bicycles. And it goes through all the reasons to bike and all the details I'm gonna, that you're going to need to bike. So it's pretty simple. Um, it's quiet as a mouse, which is kind of nice. There's not a lot of noise. It's good for the environment. We all know that. But that can't be overstated. Zero emissions. It's like t way lower carbon footprint than any other kind of transportation. There's this great quote about how the bicycle is the most efficient and beautiful machine ever invented by man and how mankind's progress stopped when they invented the bicycle. Um, it obviously makes you happy. It gets you outside of your head. I like to say that it's the ultimate convertible. Um, so it's great if you need... A little more joy in your life, a little more breathing, a little exercise. So I also say it often turns my commute from the, you know, commute for most people is the worst time of their day into the best time of my day. It's when I'm outside, I'm breathing, I'm getting exercise. I call it free exercise. Um, people will pay to go to the gym and it takes time. This is free and you're doing it while you're doing your daily life. Um, it, uh, what else? Obviously, uh, there's no insurance. There's no, it, they're really cheap. You can get a great bike for four or 500 bucks or less on Craigslist. Um, and uh, you don't have to pay for parking. I always like to say I get valet parking wherever I go. You can park pretty much right in front of wherever you're eating for lunch, etc. cetera. Um, and no gas. I think I've covered it. So now let's get to the things you need for a bike. So first of all, if you intend to ride a bike every day, forget about that cute cruiser bike or whatever cute bike you're attached to. You're getting a tool. You're not getting just a, a cool ride. So usually when I bring friends to university bikes here in Boulder, I have to spend like 10 minutes arguing them out of the bike they think they want. Sometimes the bike they think they want is a great bike. But first, look at the characteristics of a bike that is going to be rideable and that you're going to want to ride every day. So first of all, hills. Hills kind of suck. Even if you're in pretty good shape and you bike all the time, hills are a thing. So especially if you're trying to wear something to work, you need to be able to deal, deal with hills. So to deal with hills, what do you need? You need gears, and you need the bike to be reasonably light, and you need um, the bike to be able to carry whatever you're carrying, whether it's groceries or your bag, without it being on your back. Uh, my friend Dave Rogers, who works with Elephant, uh, got me away from having a backpack. Basically, you're crushing yourself if you have groceries and stuff. Um, get that weight on the bike, and then you just feel free and loose and open and great. And for a longer bike ride, say if I'm going from 32nd to my house, which is on 8th, 
you know, two bags of groceries will crush anyone's back. So, and it's horrible for your posture. It's just, it's like un massage, un body work. So here's the things you need. You need fenders for rain. You need reasonably wide tires, but uh, without too much knobbliness, you need like a through line, uh, a little through line on the tire so that you can roll pretty quickly. So not wide cruiser tires, but thinner and with a little line, hopefully with a little tread. If you're riding around in um, slush and so you need a little tread, not super smooth, 10 speed like tires. Um, but again, also not studded tough tires. Uh, in most areas, even Colorado where it snows a lot, there's not that much ice or snow on the ground usually. Um, you need uh, either panniers or a basket in the back. I like the cheap milk crates in the back. They also protect your bike if it falls over. But I've recently changed over to panniers, which are the bags on either side of your, behind your butt and on either side. And I love those because you just grab the pannier off, you put it on, and you carry it into your cafe or wherever you're going. Um, you need, for the hills, you need the gears. You need seven gears, eight gears is what I generally recommend. Anything less than that, like three gears, you're not, it's not enough to handle uh, hills. So one of my friends who's a professional cyclist or was said, with hills, don't push yourself, uh, especially if you're a commuter biker. Just get in a granny gear, easy gear, and just pedal, 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 and you'll just be at the top of the hill before you know it. You won't be super fast, but you don't need to like race and get out of breath and sweat over everything. I don't mind sweating. Often, many of you don't mind sweating. If you're in a position where you're going somewhere where sweat is okay, like home, sweat all you want. But if you're going to work, you can just granny gear it up. Uh, you need a bike bell. So ring, ring. I love bike bells because even when I'm pissed at people, someone cuts me off and I angrily express my that they mess me up. It goes ring. And I love that. I wish they had that on cars. That whenever you angrily express yourself, it came out sounding happy and cute. It's, it's a good reminder, um, whether it's a Buddhist or a Christian reminder or what, I don't know, but it's a good reminder to be cheerful and not to be aggressive. Um, but the bike bell is a very practical reason. It helps pedestrians get out of your way if you're on a bike path or a shared path. Um, what else do you need? You need a comfortable seat, but people often think comfortable seats are those huge, wide, Electra Schwinn seats that are super soft. A comfortable seat is usually more like Brooks where it's harder. Um, I... Uh, and one of the few folks who doesn't love Brooks just because if it's in rain and stuff, it gets really saggy and sad and you have to co cover it. But Brooks is great. I am just on whatever, some sort of foam rubber um, seat and it's great. So something that's kind of hard, your butt bones are hard. If hard meets hard, it's actually really stable and comfortable for whatever reason. You need to have the bike basically fit you. I've had a lot of friends who, you know, the, the, um, the handlebars are too high or too low or the seat is too high or too low. You need to be able to have your legs just about fully extend. They can have a little crook in them, but just about fully extend. And you need to have the handlebars in a, in a place that's comfortable for your shoulders and for your posture. Um, I always say get a commuter bike. Don't get a 10 speed. Don't get a mountain bike necessarily for around town. You want something kind of light with, again, the thin tires and upright. You want to be pretty upright like a cruiser bike style. Um, that way you can look around really easily, no problem, and not get hit. Um, what else? I might have forgotten some stuff. But if I did, it's all in that blog. You can read it. I think I covered everything. Um, it's not, uh, this isn't rocket science, but if you get those seven or eight things all together, you will have a ride that will be comfortable and fun and healthy and doable, practical every day of the year. Thank you.